give me this opportunity to to connect with so many people on such a, an interesting topic. Uh, I hope you're all having a, a wonderful conference so far. As you can see, I'm going to be talking to you about being an active researcher. And to do that, I'd like your help. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and, and we'll see if we can if we can get some uh, some sense of how people feel about being an active researcher before I, I try and make my, my case for why we should think more about it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I will pose a question to you the same way I would to my students in the university. We have some uh, some fun software we use. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you'll indulge me and, and play this little game with me. But if you happen to have a another tab open on your screen or, or a device or anything where you can put in a, another URL, I would encourage you now to, to put in this URL that you can see on the screen. It's polev.com forward slash super science. Uh, the important part is polev.com, P-O-L-L-E-V dot C-O-M. If you put that into to another tab or another device, uh, then you'll be asked to, to join uh, a, a, an audience response system and your keyword is, is super science. So if you see something like this on your screen, then you'll know that you're in the right place and that I'm about to ask you some questions. Uh, I'm going to ask the question now, and, and even if you haven't had a chance to, to put in the URL yet, don't worry, because on the next few slides, the, the URL will still be at the top of the screen. So even if you're struggling frantically to, to find your device or to open up another tab, it should still, it should still work for you. So uh, as I said, you can see at the, uh, at the top of the screen here, there is a, the, the URL, P-O-L-L, ev.com forward slash super science. And if you have connected there, you should be seeing a question on your screen that is asking you, do you consider yourself an active researcher? Now you have a bunch of options to choose from. You can say that you, you do see yourself as an active researcher, you don't, maybe sometimes, or perhaps you're, you're not sure. So I'll give you a moment to, to make up your, your mind on that. And you can see as well that, uh, oh yeah, we can see in the bottom corner that, that some people have found it anyway, that's great. So it looks like the, the software is at least working for, for some people. If, if you're being asked to, to, uh, to, to download something or to declare your credit card details or anything like that, uh, please don't, I'm sure you're not, but um, yeah, it's, it's very simple software. So all, all you need to do is just go to the URL and, and then you'll be able to answer, answer the question. So maybe, maybe you're not even sure of what, what I mean by, by a researcher, but I would categorize anyone as a researcher who is as contributing some time to, to finding out new knowledge, um, especially if you're in the, the, the position to be able to share that new knowledge with others. That's, uh, that's the, the basic idea of, of what or who I would consider to be a researcher. Okay, so I'll give you another couple of seconds and then we'll see, see the results for, for this group. Um, that's wonderful. I think we have we have over eighty people who've, who've responded. So let me just see if I can now uh, easily show the results. You can you can keep voting if you if you're just still connecting. Please uh, please choose your answer. So um, okay, that's uh, hopefully you can see the answers on on the screen there. That uh, round about forty percent of you consider yourselves active researchers. Uh, only two percent would say that they're not an active researcher, and then uh, more than half, fifty two percent feel that they're active researchers sometimes. And then about 6% are not sure. Interesting, okay, thank you so much for, for participating in that because that's very useful for me to, to get an idea of the, the, the views of the, the participants in this, uh, in this conference. Now I'm gonna ask you one more, one more question. So um, if, you if you're still wrestling with that decision, please, please uh, do make up your mind. And in a moment, I'm going to, to move forward to the second question I want to ask you, which is a little bit more involved. So whether you you said yes no sometimes i'm not sure the next question i want to ask you is what what do you feel are the the barriers to to being an active researcher so um hopefully now on your screen the, the question is updated to, to ask you what do you feel are the barriers that might prevent you from being an active researcher now this question is a little bit more different in that i'm not just asking you to to choose something or to, to, to pick an option or to vote i'm actually asking you to input some some thoughts or some ideas. Uh, so if you have something in mind that you feel might prevent you from being an active researcher, then please input it here. I can see people have already figured out the, the, the trick to the, these, the, this type of question. So as well as seeing the, the, the question on, on the screen, you'll be able to input your answer. You'll also be able to see everyone else's answers on your device. Now you might have to press, press the, the reload button to, to, to see the new answers as they come in. But if someone has put in an answer that you agree with, you can then 
click on a, a, a little up, um, a thumbs up to say that you, you feel the same. And if it's something that comes up on screen that you don't agree with, that you feel is, is not true of your situation, then you can give it a little, a little thumbs down to say that you disagree with it. When I do this with my students in, in Ireland, I often feel that we are not very good at saying we disagree with people because we are terrified that we might uh, offend them, especially in, in, um, in a class environment. Uh, but it's anonymous, uh, so they won't know. But no, more, more importantly, by, by clicking on the thumbs down, we're not saying that someone is wrong or, or that their opinion is invalid. All we're saying is that that doesn't tally with our own experience. We're just saying it's not true, true of our experience. So I'll, I'll give it another couple of seconds, but I think we're getting quite a, quite a clear picture here of, of some of the main challenges that, that are facing people. So uh, we've had things like um, constraints with the curriculum, uh, lack of resources, lack of knowledge, lack of time, uh, not being connected with the university, um, not having knowledge about research methodologies, uh, no free time at school to research. And then it looks like what's probably going to be the overwhelming winner here is is lack of time. Okay, well, that's um, that, that's great. I, I think that gives me a good picture of, of the group we have here. Uh, interestingly, it seems that, that, that most of you either see yourselves as researchers or uh, all the time maybe, or, or at least some of the time feel that you're researchers. And then maybe the, the barriers are to do with, um, well, several things, but in particular, not having enough time to do, to do research. Wonderful. Okay, well, so I will leave that, that poll open. And if, if you want to think about it or, or you have more, um, more input you'd like to give, or even if you'd just like to read through everyone else's answers and, and agree with them or disagree with them, please, please do so. I'll move on with the slides and with the talk, but you can keep that open if you like and, and feel free to keep contributing. So uh, I, I would like to tell you now a little bit about um, why I think it's good that some of you consider yourselves to be researchers, even if it's only sometimes. And those of you who, who don't really see yourselves as researchers, maybe I can try and convince you why, why it might be um, a good idea. I, I realize now that most of you already identify as researchers, so then I can spend more time on the, the ideas around how we might help you to be researchers. So my, my main presentation is going to be about something I've been working on for the last number of years. I'm going to go back a couple of years to explain why I feel that we, we all need to be more active in our, in our research. And I'll go back to 2016. This was the first line of a paper I wrote in, in 2016. It was an academic uh, article for, for the Journal of Science Communication. And, and it was basically therapy for me. I was complaining about my, my life as a researcher and how I felt like I was basically always under attack. Uh, and if you remember back in 2016, which I know it's six years ago, but feels like many lifetimes ago, you can imagine if you put yourselves in my shoes as, as a, a researcher based in, in, in Dublin, in Ireland, trying to forge a career in, in, in science and in education, I, I'd just been rocked by the, the idea that the, the, uh, the European Union, which had so long been supporting our, our research, was about to lose one of its biggest members in, in the United Kingdom. So with, with Brexit, we faced this idea that um, uh, one of our, our main uh, collaborating partners across so many different economic, social and research goals was about to, to leave the European Union. Uh, as well as that, there was, of course, a, a US presidential election. And during that, that campaign, there was a lot of rhetoric, a lot of talk about how people uh, felt strongly or uh, for or against science. And we had a lot of people identifying as, as being against science or anti-science, which, which was a, a scary time for, for a lot of us who, who care about science. Uh, and I guess the, even though at that time I felt we were, we were as researchers and as educators and as advocates for science and education and research, I felt we were, we were under attack. I also felt naively that it couldn't possibly get any worse. Um, now, <laughs> with the benefit of hindsight, I realized just how, just how naive I was. So of course, yeah, this, this is just the, the title of the, of the paper that I wrote, which is uh, should the science communication community play a role in political, act political activism? You could see where I was coming from in terms of my, my frustration with what was happening in the world around us and just how much I felt that science and research and education, the core of education was, was under attack. Uh, things didn't really get much better then. I, I guess, um, yeah, I'm just picking out a couple of other articles that, that have come out since. So the New York Times wrote about how, how science itself was under attack. Of course, then we had a pandemic and, and a lot of people felt at that point that not just science, but even 
health governance was under attack. And look, it's it's it hasn't gone away. Even even recently, we have people talking about uh, climate change, and with COP twenty seven on, people are talking about the um, the the environment or how, how science is is still very much under attack. So. That's not the, uh, the the most helpful of language to be talking about uh, our, our our area and our research and the things we care and are passionate about being under attack. But it gives you some sense of of where I was over the last number of years in my own feelings about how how difficult the the the, the field, the disciplines that we care and and love, were, were were facing with with numerous global and political challenges. So rather than than losing my my uh, my sense of, of purpose and, and getting very upset and sad about the world, I decided I would try and, and be, be more proactive. And I felt that even though I very much identify as a, as a scientist and as a researcher and as an educator, maybe what could help is if I found ways to help others have access to, to, to research. And this ties in with the idea of, of citizen science, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, where if we can make science more open and accessible to people to, to take part in science, then we can we can remove some of the barriers. And perhaps if there is less barriers to science and if um, wider public audiences and, and citizens from, from different areas, different communities can all engage and contribute to science, perhaps then we, we might not see such strong opinions and feelings against science or, or attacking science. So I started out trying to to gather some of my my ideas, my views on on how people can can have access to research and how they can be empowered to do research. I was very lucky at the time that for a number of years before I became the, the director of research for my department, I, I worked for for several years as the the, the doctoral program coordinator. So I had the, the the great honor of working with a lot of researchers who were coming into my university. And getting to speak to them about some of the challenges they were facing and some of the things that that made their life more more easy or more, more difficult uh, and over a number of years i i interviewed early career researchers uh, i i organized a lot of focus groups with these researchers and tried to gather opinions on on what we could do in a university to try and help in particular i worked with different groups such as science teachers being a key a key group of people who, who we felt were the most qualified to be able to, to help us in this in this goal of, of empowering people to, to be more involved in, in research. But even those outside of formal education systems, so people working in informal education like science museums or science centers, we're also trying to find ways for them to, to get more involved in research. So after many years, uh, it, it culminated recently in, in a textbook. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, the, the, the book, I'll, I'll give you some, some links as well to, to, to access it, but uh, I have a, a book and a companion website. The website should appear here. It's josephroach.e forward slash essential skills. And it's the, the culmination of all of my knowledge, all of my ideas, and all of the work I've done speaking to researchers to try and figure out how do we, how do we make research accessible to people. So just very briefly to show you the type of things that are in it, I start off in the book with trying to show the, the, the basics of, of research. And I know in, in the, the, the question I posed there, some of you felt that maybe understanding some of the, the basic research methodologies can sometimes be a barrier. And, and that's true true of all of us. We, we, we need to find easy ways to, to interpret and understand basic research methodologies. So, so I try and do that at the start of the book. And then I have some of the key things that I feel really hold us back in terms of making, making a, an impression in research, being able to actually write about our work, publish it, and, and even find ways of funding it, it usually is, is a, a challenge for everyone across the board. If, you, if you're lucky enough to, to stay in research, then generally we find ourselves being tasked with, with teaching and supervision. But of course, I feel that everyone in this conference already has the expertise they need in, in, in teaching. So, so not something many of you would need to worry about. But there's other challenges then with, with research that we're expected to be able to communicate and engage people with it, particularly, as I mentioned, citizen science being, being a way to, to engage communities in, in the work we're doing. Administration is probably not the most exciting of, of research skills, but I, I feel it's, it's important as well in terms of managing our time. Uh, and in particular, I have most of that chapter I dedicate to, to managing time because I know it was the, the main barrier people wrote about here, but it's the, the main barrier for most of us. And none of us have enough time to do the things we, we would like to be doing. And then of course, things like professional development and career progression in research are, are, are vital. And then finally, possibly the most important part is understanding the best ways to, to make sure that our health and well-being is looked after. Because if, if our health and well-being suffers, then, then everything else falls apart and we can't, we can't make a, a, an impression in research as much as we would like.
So for those of you who, who, who wish to, to pursue more research, uh, or, or maybe for those of you, those of you who, who identify as active researchers sometimes, I, I think the, the lack of time usually comes down to how do we actually uh, do the research and, and then write about it and share it. I, I think a lot of the time we, we're probably already doing the work. If we're talking about science in our classrooms or finding ways for our students to, to get involved in science, or if we're finding ways to, to empower our students to, to take part in a scientific experiment, in a way that's, that's already work that we should be capturing and should be sharing. That even just carrying out research on on your own professional practice is, is vital, and I think where where the lack of time hurts us is that being able to actually sit down and and write about that experience in a way that we could then share, in particular in in academic publications, which for a lot of us feel like they're a little bit challenging to 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 share our work in because they sometimes have barriers around academic language, the way we, we write, the, the things that are expected to be in these in these type of, of written form, papers, journal articles. So I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in trying to, to reduce the barriers in that area. And I, I, I'll just briefly give you an insight into maybe some of the, the things that I would share with people if I was trying to reduce the barriers to academic writing and help empower teachers to, to share their work through academic writing. So the way the, 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 the book works is that, as well as sharing my own views and the views of other researchers, I try and share key lessons that, that I think are very important for, for helping us make progress. And then I always share some, some free resources as well that I hope will, will empower people to, to be able to, to, to make progress. So I, I mentioned academic writing being, being key. One of, one of the reasons why I feel it's particularly important to talk about today is because it's November and whether whether you're aware or not, November is not just write a novel month in, in many parts of the world, it's also officially academic writing month. So the publishers of, of the book have very kindly made the entire chapter on writing of my book uh, freely available as a PDF for, for the month. So uh, I, I can share that with you afterwards. Uh, so in, in the, 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 the chapter on writing, what I feel are the key things that we can do as people interested in research to, to, to improve our academic writing and to contribute to research. Starting off very simply, uh, we all read and, and it's uh, no matter what our job, no matter what our role, we, we have to read. And sometimes if we don't have time to do the actual writing, what we can do is perhaps think about how, what it is that we're reading and, and critically reflect on it in terms of how we might like to write. So if you're reading something for your, for your job or for your, your studies, and you find that it's very difficult to, to engage in it, then maybe think about what is it about this, this text that you're reading that is so difficult to engage you? Is it boring? Is it poorly written? Are the sentences too long? Is there too much academic jargon? What are the reasons why you, uh, you, you, you're not engaged by it? And then conversely, if you're reading something that, that you, you really like and really enjoy, then maybe ask yourself, what, how is this written in a way that, that is capturing your attention? Is it, is it the st sentence structure or, or the way the words are used? And that's, that's, a, that's a good use of our time. If we can be uh, proactively reading in a way that, that we, we reflect on how we write, that'll certainly help us. Now, the next step is, is the, the hardest and, and probably one that, that we, we will struggle with because all of us face a lack of time in terms of trying to be a better researcher. But it is it is the the the, the key step if we were if we if we do want to share our experiences and research and write about it. So the only way around it is is to keep a schedule and stick to it. And I have some resources I can share that that uh, we find are quite useful in that. Even if it's just um, you'll see here uh, tr tracking your output. So for for anyone who's interested in research, I, I always encourage them to find a time. Uh, m maybe every day if possible, but I know that that's difficult for many people to to try and uh, ha have a space in your day where you can do a, a little bit of writing. Now, it's it's obviously a challenge to find that time, especially to find that time every day. But all of the research in this shows that if people give up a small amount of time often to write, they're more likely to make progress than if they if they wait for a long time to, to find a free afternoon or a free day where they can write because for most of us th those days don't exist it's it, it's a myth and so for 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 me for example i i've always struggled to find time for my writing but i realized that first thing in the morning is probably when i'm at my most productive and if i can do uh, even 15 or 20 minutes of of writing 
then uh, then I'm usually in a, in a better mood for the day because I felt like I've contributed to something. Uh, even if it's doing the 20 minutes of writing uh, on my phone, on the bus, on the way to work, that's um, that, that's that's still for me, I'm, I'm hitting my, my writing goals. I, I think a big barrier to all of us is that when we, we the lack of time, of course, is, is, is the main one. But then if we actually do sit down to write about our experiences and share them, we're usually not very happy with the results. We usually don't like our writing or sometimes it's so difficult to even get started because we look at the blank page and and there's very little uh, encouragement when when we're just staring at a, a blank a blank page or a blank screen. But I think something worth keeping in mind is that even even the most famous writers in the world will will talk about how when they sit down to write, they have to force themselves to just put words on on the page and force themselves to get through the first few minutes of just writing and 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 not be too hard on themselves if the writing is really bad. In fact, they would expect it to be really bad because most of us can't produce beautiful writing on command. Most of us have to sit down first and just try and get our ideas onto the page in any sort of form, and then over time try and edit them and rewrite them and reword them into something that's more coherent. So I, I encourage any anyone who's interested in research to to not be too hard on yourself when when you first start writing, and then to to trust the process that it's going to get better. And then a, a key thing I feel for all of us is, is to share our work and to actively seek feedback. And I'm gonna show you maybe just in the last couple of minutes, a couple of resources that I feel might be quite quite useful if, if you wanted to try and start writing and seek feedback in a more collaborative way. So those resources I mentioned, there's, there's usually three for each of the chapters. And for the chapter on writing, I felt that the most important resources were one, a list of writing resources. So I mentioned these resources are freely available on, on the website. Um, so this, the, the list of writing resources is just a set of books that I felt were have been very valuable for researchers who, who want to, to learn how to write better, uh, to improve our writing. And uh, they, they're split into general writing and then in academic writing, which I think are both very important. Learning academic writing is, is a skill in and, of, in and of itself, but even just learning how to, how to write, learning how to motivate ourselves to, to, to write about our experiences is an incredibly valuable skill. So that, that's a, a list of resources that, that you can find. Whoops. Uh, and yeah, if you click on the resources, then you, you get taken to them. Uh, I accidentally clicked on my screen here. So oh, thankfully you can see, still see my slides. Okay, we're back. Uh, so, this I mentioned is is probably the most important resource that that has has shaped my writing. So I went from uh, not having any publications, not doing any writing when when I was given this job eight years ago to within five years I, I became one of the more prolific writers in, in my university, largely because of this uh, this spreadsheet. It's based off an idea in a book called How to Write a Lot by Paul Sylvia. Uh, and Paul Sylvia describes the in, in very blunt language that if you want to write, you just have to keep a, a spreadsheet of what you're doing. And and it's it's very uncomfortable at the start because you'll see how little writing you're doing. We all think we're doing more writing than we are, but if you track it in a spreadsheet, you'll see how little we're doing. So so um, I would encourage you to to consider using that if you do want to track your writing. And then finally, if you if you're interested in, in working together, working with, with others, uh, I think a really powerful thing is to set up a writing group. It just makes the whole process a lot easier, makes it a lot, a lot more uh, enjoyable if, if you form a group of people in your, in your class, in your community, in your school, wherever it is that you, you think you might find like-minded people who are interested in, in working and research together, then, then forming a writing group is, is a really powerful way to to, to, to make progress with your, with your research in a more collegial environment. And then if you have gotten to the point of writing something, then I know, I know some of you said in the barriers that you don't have access to resources or you don't have access to working with universities. If you have written about your experiences, if you've, writ if you've written about the challenges of teaching science in your classroom, or if you've written about the experiments you're doing with your students, or you've written about how you've, you've tried to help your students to engage in citizen science, all of those things are valid things that would absolutely be publishable in academic journals. If you need support from universities or from professors or doctoral students who are working in the field to help make sure you get your, your writing published, if you come to them with some writing, they're far more likely to help you. Uh, as professors, we get contacted all the time with people who have wonderful ideas and wonderful suggestions of, of research they'd like to do. And sometimes we feel we're pulled in too many directions that we can't spread our time to help people. But if someone was to come to us with with a draft of of a paper even if it's even if it's um needs a lot of work even if the research needs to be analyzed or the data needs to be analyzed or or, you, or the, the the authors need help to collect data all of those things we're more likely to be able to help and support 
if we can see that there's there's already writing there because the writing is the, the most difficult part and if there's words on paper and if we can see that these uh, these these people these teachers whoever it is that that come to us if they're actually interested enough to to try and write something about it then we're much more likely to be able to help them and support them in order to get their their work published so i will i will finish up there with uh, just a reminder again the, the the book is available and because the, the publishers knew I was speaking at this conference. They, they very kindly agreed to, to give a, a discount of 25% uh, if any of you are interested in, in purchasing the book through their website. The, the uh, code is on the screen, UK author 22 but the, the publishers have also made the entire writing chapter available for free. So you can, you can find that through their website as well. Or I, in fact, I was going to say you could, uh, you could find it by connecting with me on uh, on Twitter, on social media, but I feel like at the moment that's not the most stable of of social media platforms. So um, I, I guess I, I, all I can say is I'm there for the moment, but but uh, we probably can't really speculate on the future of Twitter at this time. I would encourage you all to to consider your 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 views on research and and if you uh, feel like you you you've, you're already an active researcher and need some more support, please please do feel free to get in touch with me. My my work is to is to remove the barriers to 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 people like you and to other teachers in order for you to, to contribute to research. So uh, thank you for your efforts in, in, in difficult political environments to, to contribute to research and, and keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Roche. It's, it's very important for teachers to share also what they're doing in classrooms. And, and that's why they also should be getting into share, sharing the results in a way they know how to um, publish it or add it to different places. So they do, in a way, uh, STEM or science teachers or, or any scientists also needs to know how to write correctly and speak as well. Now, one of the questions I had is that you, you, you're involved in research also in science education, in science communication. Now, what do you think teachers could do to encourage critical thinking when looking at data presented in news or other media, for example? Yes, well, I think uh, science communication and critical thinking in particular has been uh, something we, we've all had to, to struggle with uh, over the last couple of years. And I, I think one of the big issues uh, probably goes back to the, my language at the start where, where I felt that science or research was under attack. And I think that that type of language is probably not very helpful. And especially during the, the likes of the pandemic where, where people were presented with, with data sets and with, with science on, on, uh, in, on various platforms online or via the, the TV or radio or, or, or print media. Uh, and it became very easy to, to attack people's evidence. So I think in terms of being a scientist, being a teacher, being an educator, an advocate, an advocate for science, um, the, the, the key lessons have remained the same for quite a while, that if you're going to speak about data or evidence, then, then make sure you, you, you know where the source is and make sure that it's a trusted source. Uh, I feel that most of us know that, though, and, and I feel that maybe um, that's, that's not something that, that we as, as educators or teachers really need to change. We've, we've, always, we've always done that. I think probably what's changed now is that there's a, a more openness for people to, to 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 engage in aggressive and unhelpful rhetoric across across media. And when we step forward and try and advocate for for evidence based policy and, and looking at the the data that's available and looking at the sources and and ensuring that they're they're robust, we can still be we can still be attacked and, and actually usually are attacked by, by people who don't share our views. And I think maybe. The aspirational thing I'd, I'd like us to, to, to think about doing is, is rather than just uh, being in, entrenched in defending our position, is probably we, we have to be more creative and look for ways of, of engaging people in, 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 in shared values. So, so rather than trying disagreeing with people just because they're anti-science or because they're from a political party that doesn't share our views or whatever their, their, their background or identity is, that, that makes it probably likely that we won't share the same opinions if we try and find something, some form of share, shared views or values, or even fears, if we go back to wh what it is we're arguing about in the first place, perhaps we, we all share the same views that we're worried about the health and well-being of, of our loved ones. And if we can find some sort of common ground where we start the discussion, rather than starting on the, of the point where we, are, we have our entrenched political positions, then I think that's probably a more supportive and more, um, yeah, maybe even a more compassionate place to, to, to try and have a discussion about science. Absolutely. And it's also about encouraging asking questions, isn't it? And about asking why or, or, or not 
telling person someone no you cannot really ask that question no no every question is good good uh, the other question is a bit different now i saw in an old bio of yours that uh you once wanted to be an astronaut now are you still trying to get into space or are is your work strictly terrestrial now <laughs> yeah my my work is is yeah mo mostly confined to, to 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 this planet unfortunately uh i mean i still i still volunteer for for everything i can um i yeah i vo volunteered for, for for lots of different uh space-based uh space-based initiatives um i even volunteered to have myself infected with uh with covid 19 at the start of the pandemic before there was uh, a vaccine for it but uh, unfortunately for for um, medical trials and studies as well as as astronaut programs i'm probably a bit too old already which is uh, sad to say Un unless there's uh, there's a misguided billionaire out there who wants to send me uh, my, my chances has uh, has probably passed. I, I would hope that I can make more of a contribution through my research and through my my efforts to empower others to do research. But it's something to keep in mind for 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 any of us who have younger people in our classroom. Maybe we should be encouraging them to be uh, the, the next generation of people doing interesting and exciting things. As what we were saying yesterday as well with the other keynote speaker that uh, Rihanna, that it's we do need some astronauts, but we do need lots of supporting people on earth looking at the data looking at the engineering looking at the technology looking at the mathematics so we absolutely we're all bringing our uh, contribution to it so thank you very much for joining us today and uh, we we'll hope to see you in person and we look forward to also learning how to do better research or talk about our research better thank you for sharing thank you very much